Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 8 of Photoshop for Photographers. And in this episode we're going to talk about smart objects. And it's going to be kind of an introduction to smart objects. I don't want to get into them too technically because I think it'll be confusing. I want to just show you what smart objects are and what you could use them for as a photographer to enhance your post-processing. And Smart, smart objects are pretty much like layers. They're just kind of glorified layers in a way that you could do some things to them that you can't do to layers. And there's some things you could do to layers that you can't do to smart objects. And I'm going to talk about a few of them now. Um, we have a normal background layer here. And let's just say I want to change the size of it. So it's a locked layer. I have to unlock it. I could just double click on the padlock and then click OK. And now it's unlocked. Um, I want to make it smaller. So I'm just going to resize it very, very small. And I'm going to click the checkbox to accept that transformation. Now I changed my mind. I, I want it the same, the regular size again. So I'm going to drag it back open, nice and big, and I'm going to click the checkbox. And you could see I lost all the definition and clarity in the original file. When I transformed it by making it really small, I actually kicked out some pixels, I modified pixels, then when I dragged it back open it had to interpolate the missing pixels and it lost all the, that um, clarity and definition that I had in the original file. So that's a disadvantage, that's destructive editing. We never want to do destructive editing if at all possible. I'm going to show you another example. So I'm going to back out of this. To back out is real easy. Option Command Z if you have a Mac. Alt Control Z as in Zebra if you have a PC. And I'm going to bring it back to here. Um, let's say I want to add some blur. Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to crank this blur way up and click OK. It's going to take a second to render, but you'll see what happens is it's super blurry now. I want to modify that. I said, oh geez, I made it too blurry. Well, how do I do that? There's nothing here. It's not like an adjustment layer where I could go back and readjust it. If I went up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur again, and pulled it all the way down, it doesn't do anything. I'm stuck. I destroyed pixels. So it's always really a bad thing to destroy pixels. So I'm going to back out of this. I'm going to Option Command Z, Alt Control Z, get us back to here. I could convert this to a smart object. There's two ways to do it. You could just right click anywhere on the layer and go up here to convert to smart object or you could go to layer, smart object, convert to smart object. Now what it does, it looks identical even this looks pretty similar. The only difference is in the lower right hand corner of the thumbnail there's a little square, a couple squares. That indicates it's now a smart object. Well, I have these handles here. Why don't I resize it? So I'm going to resize it and I'm going to click OK. Now I decided that's too small so I'm going to bring it back up to our normal size and click OK, and you could see I didn't lose any of my definition. What it does, it has a sidecar file, an additional file that it actually leaves the original file intact, doesn't do anything, and it writes to the sidecar file the changes that you're doing. So you're not damaging any pixels. And to show you, we'll do some blur, that Gaussian blur, and I'm going to turn it all the way up, and I'm going to click OK and it's going to blur. It takes a second to render. Now it's all blurred again, but if you look over here to the right, I have this smart filter layer, and under the smart filter layer I have Gaussian Blur. I could just double click on Gaussian Blur, and I come back with my dialog box, and I want to tone it down, and click OK. It's toned down. It's magical working with smart objects. Now, I'm going to back out of this until we get back to our original smart object. One thing about smart objects, if um, there's certain things you can't do with them. Let's say I want to paint. I'm going to get my paintbrush and I want white and as you can see it has that circle with the line through it that's like no, I can't do it. I cannot paint on a smart object. What you can do though 
is you could, if I double click on the thumbnail, it will open the smart object as in the in the uh, program that originally that it originated in to put it in a simpler term this um, file originated in Photoshop so I double click on this it's gonna open it up as another tab as a normal layer now here's our smart object see and this tab has our new kind of uh, layer that we did now I could paint on this layer. Okay. Now all I got to do is save this. I could hit Command Save, or I could go up to the File menu and just click Save. Now it's saved. Now I'm going to close it, and as you could see, now I'm on my smart object, and you could see the paint has been rendered on this. So that's a way around it because um, you can't do certain things to smart objects. You can't do anything that's going to actually modify a pixel uh, because that can't get written to the side file and you don't want to uh, modify the original file. So there's certain limitations to smart objects. All right, now I'm going to close this and I'm not going to save it and I'm going to minimize Photoshop. I have a, a raw file here. I'm going to double click on the raw file and as you guys know when you open a raw file in Photoshop it, it opens in Adobe Camera Raw. Now um, I'm not going to make any adjustments but what I, if I just hit open object or as you could see I have it set up now I kind of ruined it but typically let me uh, go back and change this to what it should be. This is probably what yours looks like. It says open image okay if I hold the shift key down it will change to open object now what that means instead of opening it up as a normal layer it's gonna open it up as an object as a, as a smart object in Photoshop another thing you could do is which I had my Adobe Camera Raw set up already is you click right here on this link it looks like a link Adobe RGB whatever, whatever yours says and right here this little checkbox click that and click OK. Now it will always say open object. If you wanted to open it up as a normal layer you would hold the shift key down and it changes to open image. Okay so you got that if um, if yours is probably set up like this it's gonna say open image. If I click on that it's gonna open it up as a normal layer. If I hold the shift key down and then click on it it now says open object and it's gonna open it up as a smart object in Photoshop. Now I want to show you one more thing. A lot of times what we do is we open something up as a smart object and we did some modifications on it in Adobe Camera Raw and we want to do some different um, modifications on a copy of it in Adobe Camera Raw and then blend them together, together to get a certain effect. Now what we could do now let's just say I did some modifications in Adobe Camera Raw on this there's a trick to doing this if you just duplicate it I'm gonna show you this this is the wrong way if you hit command J like you would duplicate a layer command J or you just go up to layer duplicate um, then if I double click on this it's gonna open into the program that it originated in in this case it's Adobe Camera Raw so I'm gonna double click on the top smart object and now it's in Adobe Camera Raw now just to show you what's gonna happen I'm gonna turn exposure all the way down and I'm gonna click OK what it's gonna do is it actually modified both of them when you did a uh, copy by hitting command or control J it's sharing that sidecar file so any modification you do to one will be reflected in both of them we don't want that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo this by hitting the option command or alt control Z until we're back to the single smart object now what we want to do is we want to right click here and we want new uh, new smart object via copy or you could go to the layer menu go to smart object 
new smart object via copy. Now it looks just like before, but I'm going to double click on the top smart object. It opens in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to turn exposure all the way down just so it's real graphic and you could see it. And you'll see now only the top smart object has been modified, not the bottom one. Now the reason why we do this a lot is sometimes there's certain blend blendings, blend modes that we want to take advantage of. And one of them is a lot of times to bring out detail. So we kind of um, bring out like uh, highlights in, in as much. We bring clarity way up, let's say, in this one. And um, we're going to go to the HSL grayscale panel and convert it to grayscale. So now it is a black and white image. <clears throat> Click OK. Now it's going to render. And as you can see, now this one is the black and white one. And this one on the bottom is the color one. Now I'm going to blend them with luminosity. And you can see it's color, but it's real graphic looking. So there's the original image, and there's our blended image. So there's a lot of applications for this. No, um, what's real popular right now is that real kind of grunge look. This is one way of getting the grunge look, is you would have a smart object, and you would uh, duplicate it via copy. You would do separate modifications in Adobe Camera Raw to each of them, and then you would blend them, uh, usually with luminosity, but different ways, and you would get this kind of grunge look. So that's just to give you an idea of what smart objects are, the advantage to use them, and that is that it's usually non-destructive. You could go back and make some adjustments to them. And then different ways that if you were using raw files that you would blend them to get a certain effect. Um, that's you know kind of uh, something to whet your appetite, uh, what smart objects are. And as we move forward in this Photoshop for Photographer series, I'll be doing more and more here and there with smart objects and you'll learn um, some more applications and how you could take advantage of them to enhance your photography. So that's it for episode 8. I'd like to thank everyone for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. Everyone really is on the whole. Everyone's very kind. Thank you. If you guys haven't already, if you could go over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate it. And go over to my website and see all the photography um, tips and videos and stuff I have over there. Everything's free and I really uh, want to help everyone become better photographers. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching.